Hi everybody, welcome to Monday's edition of IndyCar. My name is Gordon Ross. <clears throat> On today's show, I'm looking at a new means of measuring Scottish economic performance. Recently, the Fraser of Allender Institute, which is the major uh, economic think tank and financial think tank for the whole nation of Scotland, was asked to provide a new way of measuring the economic performance of, of Scotland. The SNP government has, has decided that the statistics on the performance of the Scottish economy have never really been accurate enough to make a good argument, a good economic argument for independence and therefore to actually make a proper decision about it we need more facts. So what's the new system and how does it differ from the old? Well the new system is called GNI, that stands for Gross National Income. And in the past, we used a system known as GDP, Gross Domestic Product, which probably people are more familiar with. The differences are quite simple. With Gross Domestic Product, for example, it measures the uh, amount of money generated inside the country itself, inside its boundaries. But it doesn't take into account the fact that some of that money that's being generated, the, the profits made from that business, do not always stay inside Scotland. So rather than looking at where the money is made, <coughs> GNI looks at where the money ends up afterwards, where that profit goes to after it's been earned. So GNI, for example, might look at, uh, say there, there are companies in Scotland which have registered headquarters in New York or London or Zurich, then they might make billions of pounds in the Scottish economy but instead of the profits from that billions of pounds staying inside the Scottish economy and being spent there or invested there, they go to Zurich or they go to New York or they go to London. So the GNI shows us what we don't normally see, which is how much money is being sucked out of the Scottish economy by big corporations with foreign headquarters, even foreign headquarters as close as London. Now, the GNI figures have been published this week and the interesting thing about them, you can see these online incidentally, they will be uh, available on, on uh, the internet pretty widely now. But what they show is a general trend that Scotland until very recently, in fact until about 2007, its gross domestic product was less than its GNI. In other words, we were keeping a little bit more of the money than we do now. In other words, there wasn't a net outflow of money until 2007. Until 2007 we were, generally speaking, uh, in the black as it were. Most of the money, or nearly all of the money that we were earning in Scotland was invested or stayed here or went to shareholders here. And then something happened and the two figures began to sort of diverge. And what happened was the GDP figures started to overtake the GNI. Now that doesn't sound very exciting, but what it meant was that suddenly money started to get hoovered out of the Scottish economy by foreign companies. Now this is partly driven by the fact that many companies which had located in Scotland moved their HQs from Scotland back to London and the South East around the time of the financial crash in 2008 that started to happen. And because of that, Scotland lost a lot of revenue to the South East. It migrated. The money was channeled away from the Scottish HQ, which was then moved to London or abroad, and Scotland lost that income completely. Now, the amount of income, approximately, is about 6% of our gross domestic product. So 94% of what we make stays in Scotland. But a, a very significant figure of 6% is draining away to other countries in other jurisdictions. Now the biggest culprit, as you might imagine, is North Sea Oil. About 40% of all the cash that's draining out of the Scottish economy is coming out of the North Sea and disappearing off into other people's bank accounts in other countries. This is largely a result of the way, the rather loose way, that the British state has managed North Sea Oil. It has arranged it in such a way that the, the foreign national companies, the big corporations, make most of the money and take it away to their foreign tax havens or, or to British tax havens that are run by the, the state and run by the City of London. But they don't come to Scotland. 
And because of that, we lose billions of pounds per year in potential revenues. Now, we're not talking about taxes here. We're talking about profits to Scottish-based firms. And those Scottish-based firms could have been registered here. There could have been an oil company here, which could have been making a lot of profit out of North Sea oil. But it isn't because the British state sold licenses only to foreign companies and, of course, their own company, BP, which is now officially, obviously, it's an independent company. It's listed on the stock exchange, but essentially it is still a British creation. And then there's Royal Dutch Shell and there's Exxon Mobil. All of these multinational corporations do not have HQs anywhere near Scotland, and yet they can come in and suck all of the oil out take it all away, make profits from it, and none of the profits really come to Scotland. The only profits that we make are from the service industries in Scotland which serve those big multinationals. So what the GNI figures have shown us is that Scotland has a potentially very viable economy, but it's being undermined by Westminster allowing big corporations to hoover money away from Scotland and encouraging these corporations to set up their HQs in the southeast of England so that all of the profits to shareholders are migrating southwards, basically. So how does this affect the independence campaign? Well, what it does is, because these figures are agreed by the Fraser of Allender Institute as being accurate, or as accurate as they can be, and the Fraser of Allender Institute is by far, by no way, is it in any way for independence. Quite the reverse, the Fraser of Allender Institute is about as conservative an institute think tank as you could get. All they are doing is presenting the statistics in a different format. It's the same statistics, but it's showing us where the losses and the leaks are occurring. And GNI is the first time we've been able to see where the profits that are made in Scotland are going and roughly how much of the Scottish economy is leaking away to other places. It's quite a substantial amount of money, incidentally. So something like 6% of the entire economy of Scotland, the 6% of the money that's made by every working person in the country, is being taken away. It's being taken away and distributed amongst the wealthy and the super rich and the offshore bank accounts of these big multinational corporations and all the shareholders and the pension funds who invest in them, who are all foreign foreign registered companies. So you can see the problem here. Scotland's being exploited not just by uh, the Westminster government, it's being exploited by everybody in the world virtually who has an interest in oil and gas and whiskey incidentally because most of our whiskey revenues, most of our whiskey profits uh, are not returned to Scotland because most of the whisky production in Scotland is owned outside of the country, something that most of us don't know about. But the whisky industry, although it's a huge success, much of the profits never come back to Scotland. They go to big multinational corporations. They go to places like Diageo. Uh, so, in a nutshell, what the GNI figures now reveal is just how badly the Scottish economy is leaking and why it's important that independence happens so that that leak can be plugged and these profits return to where they belong, which is in the country where they're being made. Again, it's a powerful argument against not just globalisation, but it's a powerful argument against tax avoidance. The British government, as we know, is wanting to leave the European Union so that it can protect its tax avoidance and tax evasion businesses in London. Um, they are moaning at the moment, I heard today, about Russian dirty money being laundered through London uh, financial institutions. But this is just whining. They, the London financial institutions don't care where the money comes from as long as it goes through their accounts and goes through their companies before it ends up in the British tax haven somewhere, like Bermuda or the Bahamas, wherever it is. The point is, this business about trying to punish Russians for, for feeding dirty money into the British economy is a complete smokescreen. They've been doing it for decades with every kind of money, not just Russian money. There's, there's drug money coming from all over the world, there's money coming from Russia, there's money coming from China, there's money coming from Saudi Arabia, there's money coming from every corner of the world, from all kinds of dubious places and very dubious sources. 
some of them some of the presidents and uh, top officials in other countries are scamming money out of their own systems and salting it away in British tax protectorates. So, it's big business. The important thing to take out of the GNI figures for Scottish independence is that we need independence to put this right. At the moment, the estimates for how much we are hemorrhaging per year vary a lot, but I have heard one figure which was the better part of £9 billion pounds being lost to the Scottish economy every single year through foreign companies headquartered abroad sucking profits out of the out of the operations they have in Scotland to their shareholders in other countries. In order to stop that, we need to be independent and we have to be able to decide who is allowed to operate in Scotland and where they where they pay the profits and where where they pay their taxation. At the moment we can't do that. And the only way we could do it is if Scotland had pulled out of the British Union and become its own country again. In which case we could rewrite every single licence and every agreement on inward investment could be rewritten to plug all these gaps. So there's a lot of good things that will come out of GNI figures. And I believe the Scottish Government, when it does launch its, uh, its prospectus for independence, is going to base it on very solid foundations. Things that cannot be challenged by the mainstream media, cannot be challenged by the British government because the facts are agreed in the statistics. Last time out, we had a great deal of difficulty getting any kind of numbers that were accurate enough to base our economic arguments upon. This time, it will be different. This time, we have concrete facts and we can prove them to everybody who asks us. So, we will be fighting with the right kind of uh, financial weaponry this time, we will be able to prove that we can improve the GNI figures by being independent and that we can recover most, if not all, of the nine billion which is currently leaking away to capitalist bodies around the world. Basically, they're usually investment funds of one sort or another. Sometimes they are pension funds in foreign countries. So uh, the profits from business conducted here in Scotland are flowing out and paying the pensions of people in other countries instead of here. This is what needs to be put right. Taxes need to be paid on income here to enable our pension scheme here to be more viable than it is. So there's a lot of things come out of GNI. I hope I haven't made this too complicated for you, but the basic thing with GNI is it gives us the full picture of how much the Scottish economy makes per year and how much of that profit stays here. And at, at we, at, all we know at the moment is that only 94% of what is made here stays in Scotland in terms of profit. I'm not talking taxation, I'm talking about the profits made by big corporations, oil companies, gas companies, uh, power companies as well to some extent because many of the big power corporations in the UK are not registered in Scotland either. Plus, obviously, we've got the big whisky industry and food industries, some of which are owned outside of the country as well. And this is a problem for Scotland. Much, much of Scotland's biggest businesses, or many of them, are owned by other countries. And much of Scotland's landmass is owned by foreign nationals. It's like people can come to Scotland and buy what they want, take what they want, make profit from the, what they want, and we're not allowed to say anything about it. We've just got to sit there and let it happen. GNI gives us something to fight back with. And I think, just from the point of view of accurate statistics, it'll make a big difference. Anyway, that was subject for today. I know it's a little bit complicated, but basically what's being provided by the Fraser of Allender Institute will allow us to see the capital that's flying out of Scotland every year to other countries and will allow us to target those areas where we need to plug those gaps and that's important when you're wanting to construct a new economy and I think the SNP is right on the money with this this is an excellent piece of work not only by the Scottish Government but by the Fraser of Allender Institute itself which is non-political unbiased in fact pretty much anti-independence but the Fraser of Allender Institute has done this work in good faith and it's produced these statistics based on the most accurate data they have. And I don't think anybody, even even the British government, cannot gainsay what the Fraser of Allender Institute has done here. 
It's an unimpeachable source. It's probably the most respected think tank in Scotland when it comes to economics. And I hope that the SNP will use this uh, this new GNI measurement as a way of just showing what can be done with the Scottish economy in detail and prove it. And that's the difference between GNI and GDP. I'll see you later. Bye for now.